Hi, this is Jake Goodison from Encodian. So in this video, we're going to review how we can send a document um, through Power Automate, add a text watermark uh, in the scenario where we want to share the document externally and perhaps we either want to put an image watermark on to show that it's come from Encodian or that we wanted to mark that the document was uncontrolled copy. So let's get cracking, we'll do something really simple. First things, we're gonna launch this flow from within uh, SharePoint. So navigate to a SharePoint document library, go to Power Automate, and let's create a flow. We wanna click show more, and navigate down to complete a custom action for the selected file. So we'll do that. And it's gonna ask us to just confirm the association. So we'll click continue. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename the, this, this file, sorry, the flow here, because this is what's going to appear inside um, the SharePoint library on the context menu. So we'll call, call it something nice and obvious, share document via email, and we can see here's the, here's the setup. We don't need to change these. In effect, what this is going to do is get the properties for the file that we've selected. But what we do need to do is actually go and get the file itself because we're going to pass that to the encoding connector to add the watermark. So what we'll do is we'll do get file content and let's just do PDF demo. Sorry, wrong site. And we're going to select a file. Uh, sorry, we're not going to select a file. We're going to select the identifier property. Oh, I'm struggling to type. from the identify property from the get file properties action. We'll pass that in. So at this stage now, we've got for the selected file within SharePoint, we've got the properties of the file and we've also got the get file content. Now, let's add the action to apply the text watermark. Now, typically what we would do is click on the encoding action here on encoding and we'll select the, the production, uh, well, the connector that you will see. Um, these two watermarks we're looking at today are actually currently on deployment by Microsoft and should be globally available within the next two to three weeks. We're going to use our staging connector, but don't worry about that. In essence, when you search for encoding, just look for, look for the text watermark actions. So we're not doing to PDF, we're going to Word. So let's just pop that in. And the first thing we do is pass the file name of the file. So let's just find that. We're going to pass the file name with the extension from Get File Properties. We want to pass the file itself. So again, we want to pass get file content, file content property. So that's the file itself. And we're going to simply put into this, um, if I've got a spell uncontrolled, which I can't do this morning, uncontrolled. This is, this is the data that we're going to actually put into the document as a text watermark. Now, obviously what we can do, we can use dynamic data if we wanted to, or expression, but I'm just simply going to put uncontrolled copy. And what I'll also do is set its diagonal. Now, if I want to, I can, I can change the thread culture. I can change the font, size, color. If you leave it set to zero, it just means it will set the, the size of the font to the width of the, of the document or the, if you've gone diagonally, the available space for a diagonal watermark. So I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Uh, I'm not gonna set it to semi-transparent. Uh, I'll just leave that as is. So that will um, add the watermark to the document. The final thing I'm going to do is send an email uh, to an external party. So let's go to send an email v2 and let's just say we want to, so there's a document for review and let's just say, let's use a bit of dynamic data, we'll just do file name and extension and I've got a bit of text here that I'll copy and paste in and down the bottom we need to add the document, the process document or watermarked Word document to the attachments name. So I'll just go in here, select the file name being returned by the encoding action and then the file content being returned by the encoding action as well, okay? So the only thing we haven't done, of course, is specify a to field. Now, it's a bit pointless hard coding this value because it means that whenever anybody cl clicks share document via email, it's always gonna get to the same person. So we need to get a dynamic value from the user. And the way we do that is on the trigger action, Simply click add an input, select email, and that this property here should be uh, asked, well, uh, the, it should appear on when you execute the flow, it should ask the user for the email, email field. And what we can then do is basically pass that email property into the trigger itself. So add dynamic content. Let's just do a search for email. And we should see that here it is off the trigger, so we can select that. 
Okay, so let's just review this. Click save. At that point this has been saved, that will publish it to the SharePoint library so we'll be able to see it. Um, excellent, so that's done. Oh, if I got that shit, I will just leave that, it's not a problem. That's what it's gone to. Okay. Um, quick thought though, just whilst waiting, waiting for that to save. Um, now obviously within SharePoint library, this you can select any type of document that's in the library. So in a real world scenario, what you might do is put an expression um, in here to say, you know, if if the document's not a Word document, then, then don't attempt to watermark and just send it via email. If it is a watermark, then add the text watermark. But for simplicity and speed reasons, we'll, uh, we'll ignore that for now. So my flow is now ready, I need to test it. The way I should do that is I'll jump into a SharePoint library and let's just give that a refresh so that we can uh, hopefully see the, um, the Power Automate flow. So I'll just click on here, go to Automate, and we'll just wait for that to load up. Share document via email, brilliant. So if I select that. Now sometimes when you first create a flow, what I have seen is that the, the user input value, which in this example is an email, doesn't always get shown, but let's, um, let's see if we get prompted. So we'll just set those connections up and actually brilliant. It's asked me for that so I can just select the email, which in this instance is myself, Ooh, apologies. And I can click run flow. And that should uh, send my email through. And here's the email that's just been sent. And if I double click on this, uh, we should see the watermark document. So there we go, there's the text watermark that's been added. now. If we wanted to add an image watermark, we need to do something a little bit different. So let's just close these down. And let's go back to our flow. So in this example, what we'll do is we'll remove the add text watermark to Word. And then what we're gonna to need to do is actually go and get the image file that we wanna insert. So let's do get to our metadata. And let's just pick up from and select the file that we're interested in. So we want to go to shared documents. We want to go to, oh, no, actually we don't want to go to shared documents. I'm in a different library. So Word Watermark Demo, and we want to pick up the Watermark PNG. And we're going to add another action. This time it's going to get the file content. We're going to use get file content, and we're going to use it by path. Uh, same site. And we're going to, again, select the same file. So this just means we've got the properties, so we've got the, the name of the file, but it also means that we can get the file content as well. So, and now we're going to add the encoding action, um, as we did before. And we're going to do uh, watermark. And we're going to do add text watermark, sorry, add image watermark to Word. So this time, we're going to pass the file name, of the of the file selected in SharePoint, get file properties. We're going to pass the file content coming from. Let me just pass that in so we can see the right one. File content from the get file content action because that's actually the the file that we selected from SharePoint. Next, what we'll do from the watermark file name is we can get the name property which is being returned by the get file metadata. So that's basically the file name, and we're going to use get file content using path, which is the image file that we've selected. Um, if needs be, there's some advanced options here. You can, again, change scale, uh, set the image to semi-transparent. I'll just leave it as is. Now, what will have happened when we remove the encoding action? It will have dropped out the, the properties that we passed to the email, so we just need to pop those back in. So we'll do file name coming from the encoding action, and then file content, and click save. Now, again, what we'll do is we'll nip back to, to SharePoint, We'll just refresh it because we've changed the um, changed the flow, and we'll send that again. So we should be prompted to pop an email address in. So we'll select J, and we'll click Run Flow. So that will have started that flow, and I should get an email in a moment. And here's that email that's just popped in and I'll just double click the attachment to check we've got the image watermark and there we go. So as I said, at the time of writing, the actions are, are being deployed by Microsoft and they should be available in a couple of weeks. So you should just be able to go to the encoding connector in Power Automate and, and add those actions. 
Um, if you have any issues or questions, um, please visit support uh, support.encoding.com or email support at encoding.com and the uh, team will be delighted to help.